One of the most common questions I get when it comes to refrigerators not cooling is the question of, does it need just a little bit of Freon to get it working? Well, today I wanna to show you how to troubleshoot whether or not you need some of the cool juice in your refrigerator, or if there's an easier, more simple reason that your refrigerator is not working. So let's get inside of one of these refrigerators, and I wanna show you a few different steps on how to solve this. The first thing that we want to do is simply figure out what the temperatures really are in these upper and lower cabinets, or side by side. You can use a thermostat or a thermal gun to get an idea. Exactly how far off are each cabinet's temperatures? Is it just one cabinet that's too high or are both cabinets having problems? If you find that one cabinet is having temperature problems, it's unlikely that you're actually going to need Freon for your unit. Make sure to check the damper system, cold control, sensors, or any other system first that would handle the interchange between the two cabinets. But let's say both systems are too warm and they are not cooling well. Let's go ahead and take the panel off in the freezer. In most refrigerators, there are two or four screws that hold the panel in place and it's gonna vary from model to model. With the panel off, here's what's behind the system. There should be silver coils that makes the system cold as well as an evaporator fan. Let's focus on the coils. One of the most important things you can do here is inspect the coils for frost and ice. If there is a ton of ice on it where it's totally packed in snow, then it can't exchange the heat for cold at the coils themselves, and chances are you may have a defroster problem, not a Freon problem. Here's a few different frost patterns that you could find behind these coils. Proper looking coils should have a thin or medium layer of frost on them that is like this one, and it should be uniform. If your system has absolutely no frost at all, then either the temperature control isn't working or you pretty much have no refrigerant in the system. Now, if the frost only goes to a certain length of silver tubing and then suddenly stops, you may have likely a low refrigerant or sealed system issue. Even worse, if you see a large ice ball only in one area near where the refrigerant comes in, that is definitely a red flag that you could need more Freon. Now, just to be sure, Leave the refrigerator running for an hour or so with the panel off and see what happens to the frost. If the pattern changes, it could be something else, but if it stays only with a portion of the system icing up, with the panel off, you do likely have low refrigerant. But we know that this refrigerator isn't temping right, so let's compare the coils to the refrigerator on the left. Two screws, and then where the ice maker should go, and remove the panel, and now I have it open. Here's what the coils look like on this second fridge about an hour later after I've opened it up. It has a very robust amount of ice showing that the warm, moist air is flowing over the coils and the heat is being absorbed by the refrigerant, which is what we want to see. Again, if the refrigerant is low, it means that the heat is not being absorbed by the silver coils because, well, <laughs> there isn't any refrigerant. Now let's look at some other areas on the refrigerator problems. I'm now going to remove this refrigerator out from where it sits so we can inspect the area underneath and behind the refrigerator. At the bottom of this refrigerator, you should have a cardboard or metal panel. On this one, you can see some dirt buildup on the outside, which does need cleaned off. Go ahead and remove the panel on your refrigerator. It may look a little bit different than this in terms of screw and screw styles, but generally once all the screws are removed, you should be able to lift the panel up and out. Now let's go ahead and inspect the system from left to right. On the right side, you should have condenser coils on most models. These coils on the back of the refrigerator are the exact opposite of the silver coils inside the fridge. These expel heat that was absorbed in the refrigerator. Now if these coils are clogged with dirt, the heat cannot go anywhere, which would cause your entire system not to cool right. Next, you should have a fan that blows air from the coils onto the compressor, and then finally on the left side, you have the compressor itself. Now, one thing you can check back here is the temperature of the compressor and the black coils. The compressor can get up to about 120 degrees under normal circumstances, and this is expected. The black coils also should be about 15 to 25 degrees warmer than the air around the refrigerator because the black coils should be expelling heat. If you find that the coils are not warm at all, you're either having a low refrigerant scenario or the compressor is not starting at all and you could have a relay problem. Again, speaking of the compressor, is it even on? Put your hand on it and make sure that it is running. It should feel like it is buzzing. Now, if it's not buzzing, well, it's not gonna get your fridge cold now, is it? If it isn't running, the chance is you do not have a Freon problem. Either it's going to be a control, thermostat, or relay problem on the refrigerator. 
Also make sure the condenser fan is running. This takes air coming from the cardboard or metal plate that is cooler and then blows it over the black coils, the compressor, then out through the other side of the plate where the other side of the air holes are. If the fan isn't working right, it won't allow the air to exchange, which makes the fridge cold. While inspecting all these things, make sure that the black condenser coils are cleaned. Heavy black coils like these can be cleaned with a coil brush, either on a handle or in this case, my drill gun, as well as a vacuum cleaner. Now, if yours has a thinner aluminum coil with thin metal heat sinks, you don't want to use the thicker coil brush. You may want to use compressed air to blow the dirt off, then gather it up with a vacuum cleaner. Either way, it looks way better now. Finally, one of the last and most important things you can do to determine if your refrigerator needs Freon is to use a multimeter and test the amperage going into the compressor. Take your multimeter and set it to amperage. Then locate a wire that is going into the compressor. Usually it's a red, black, or pink wire. Then put the clamp on the wire. You should get an amperage reading, but make sure that the clamp only has one single wire in it. Otherwise, if you have two, they could cancel each other out. Generally, a good refrigerator will see about 0.8 amps or higher. In the case of this refrigerator, we have 0.9. I made a video a few months ago about a top mount Whirlpool refrigerator, and we did some of the similar tests on this. The coils had a big ball of ice on it in one corner, and the amperage test showed a much lower amperage than 0.7 amps on the compressor wire. So when we ended up tapping that system, it was in fact low of refrigerant. When you're inspecting all these things, make sure to put that plate back on the back of the refrigerator because that air does need to flow over the fan and the coils and the compressor. And if you leave that panel off, it's not going to cool the compressor properly. So if you find out that your system's a little bit warmer than when you initially checked it, make sure to put that back on. Hopefully this video has given you a few ideas on figuring out if your refrigerator just needs a, a little shot of Freon. There's a lot of things in this that you can check to rule out Freon or to confirm that you need refrigerant for these units. I always suggest trying to avoid filling it up with Freon or learning how to do that because once you've actually filled it with Freon, there's no going back and you've introduced something new to the system and eventually it will leak out unless you do it the proper way. But now you know, and I hope that this video finds you well. Make sure to check the descriptions and tags for all the product information on the things we used in this video. Have a great day.